first, actually. I do want to watch hey, Mickey everyone. Muse. Hey, everyone. Brayden. What's up, Brayden? What's up, man? I like him. He's pretty good. He's he's uh He does a lot of work for his stuff, man. Like, he's into... Like, he had the one a couple weeks... He had the one, like, a while... Oh, shoot. He had one a couple... A while ago, Um, you know, when he went to actually one of the Reedy Creek... Formerly Reedy Creek... Um, you know, meetings and stuff like that. So um, he does like really good work and he's got a lot of insiders, you know, as most of these guys do. So uh, let me go ahead and turn down the music and then we can actually like pay attention and let me know if the sound is great and all that stuff. You know what I mean? One Braden here coming to Should you with be a good. breaking Disney news update on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Today is the day before Ash Wednesday. Fat Tuesday, which is a day celebrated all over the world, but in particular over in Louisiana, in New Orleans. Is it basically which Mardi Gras? Setting for the update to Splash Mountain. Oh, that's like a Coast, CG mock -up. Of course, over in Florida cool. with Walt Disney World and over in California. That looks cool. Disneyland. I feel like so coincide. I feel like it needs to be brighter though, right? I feel like it needs to be brighter. That's one thing. Okay. My one gripe about Pandora. Okay. That was my one gripe about Pandora. When it got dark, it wasn't as vibrant as what the movie was. You know, when you go into Navi River, Navi River, Fat Tuesday is Mardi Gras. Yeah, okay, that's what I figured. Um, yeah, when you go into Navi River, even the Navi River ride, there's some parts that aren't bright. Like you see, like the part with the LCD screen. And it has that weird, like, uh, dog-looking animal or whatever, and he just, like, he goes, you know, he just passes by. I feel like that can be a lot brighter. Like, I don't know what it is, but, like, for some reason, it's just not as vibrant as it showed in the movie. And that was my main gripe about Pandora as a whole. Like, I don't feel like it was as bright as it should have been. Because if you make that very bright, then you don't even have to worry about the whole area either being too dark or putting random lights in places where why would you put lights? You know what I mean? Because it's supposed to be Pandora. So I feel like they could have did that a little better. I don't know if it's like the paint that they were using for makeup or, you know, for whatever. But um, that's like my main gripe about Pandora as a whole. With this day, Disney has released a batch of new See, her animatronic looks so good. To Splash Mountain, taking place right now, where the Song of the South-based ride is being rethemed to the 2009 Disney animated And I didn't get a chance to see Princess them testing the water, Claw. either. I missed it. In recent it. months, we've seen the exterior of this attraction at Walt Disney World go full rainforest cafe mode, mm -hmm. as I like to say, with tons and tons of artificial plants and flowers being added to the exterior in an attempt to update yeah it's Georgia a really Red good play one. inspired splash mountain exterior into something so then let me ask you this then what about does it have to be that green you know like how does how does changing it to more green translate to tiana right new orleans is just greener you know instead of frontier the west i mean i guess you could say that but it's because it's because it's like the bayou and stuff right i guess that's pretty much what it is Being better reflective it is what it is the louisiana bayou right as for how this mountain he exists just in the bayou of all places imagineering says it's a salt dome and above ground one quite interesting there getting into the brand new details that we oh speaking of a salt a salt dome apparently that is that that is not good right that has like some slavery in in connotations right i believe i heard that from one of the you know the criticism channels right i believe that's what it was and also now it's coming out summer which i guess we knew it was coming out this year but we didn't know exactly when but now we we see it's coming out summer and if they're testing the water then then that's a good sign at least but the problem now is going to be this is going to be a virtual queue line now so you're only going to be able to ride this in the virtual queue and then if that's the case and that means tron and tiana are both going to be virtual queues yeah florida in the summertime dude you don't even want to get me started on florida in the summertime 
Oh my god. I can't it's gonna be so hot. I'm I'm dreading streaming from the parks there. I remember just going there when I was just doing the videos. And I was just recording videos. Now I'm gonna have to go there and stream all day and I'm gonna have to make sure I drink water and have like candy because i think that's what happened to me on wednesday i think I, my sugar was low because i didn't really have i'm i'm gonna tell you look peeps okay this is i went to the store today okay it's not a game with me i'm telling you You see where I'm getting at? Like, <laughs> it's not a game with me, I'm telling you. I have it bad, dude. I really do. And I think that's what happened. I got a headache because my sugar was low. Because as soon as I... Oh, wait. I have gummy bears. Gummy worms somewhere. Okay, never mind. I'm getting, I'm getting off track here. I'm getting off track. We got today. First, there's new signage on the construction walls outside yeah, the attraction. Yeah, that was their Wednesday. Disney that was their World Wednesday. Confirming that Tiana's Bayou Adventure will open in Orlando this summer, summer 2024. Mm -hmm. Disneyland yes. has yet to get an official opening season. We're likely talking fall or late oh, 2024. Oh, is it? Does it look like that step in still? Doing both have they have they, they done anything? The Disney World version, and more and more of them are moving over to doing the Disneyland's one. I haven't seen how current the, uh, the Magic Kingdom are completed. Disneyland and looks heads over to Disneyland to do the same. Oh, yeah, here. As, how recent is this sort of work as both of these updates are so similar? I would the think, yeah, Magic Kingdom I would think end of the year the then, right? First is because Magic Kingdom has more pressing capacity issues right now, which is why this update has been relatively quick. Well, not only that, it's because it closed down first, too. No, they haven't. OK. Yeah, yeah, that's why I think in fall or winter, maybe like right before Christmas or something. Because if they're taking a lot out and only putting so much back in, because that's the whole that's the other complaint is they took like 60 animatronics out and they only put in like 30 or something like they lost like half of the animatronics or something. So that's like the big gripe of the criticism. They say, that's what I figured around Christmas. Comparing it against other projects that we have seen Disney do at Walt Disney World in recent years, where they really, really seem to take their time. The sure. thing here is this isn't just a new addition anyone? where Disney can take or leave it. This is an existing attraction, which has been down for quite a long time. It's a people eater. It's they're one of they're the also going to have a food place. Yeah. Uh, so it being down here. Has so where are they putting that? Are they the putting that? And the crowds and all that sort of stuff. The where? operations of the Magic Kingdom. So Magic Kingdom Park operations, they can't afford to have Splash Mountain closed the whole year. Yeah. And to that end, Tiana's Bayou Adventure will be opening at the Magic Kingdom this summer. If you want speculation on a more specific opening time frame inside of this one that Disney gave us today, I want to make note that Disney is still... That's what it was. It was Pecos Bill. That's what it was. That's what it was. So, like, in between Adventureland and Frontierland, they'll have, like, the New Orleans area or whatever. Um, which actually brings me to another point, and I totally forgot about my point. Um, because he said it. Oh, that was the other thing. I don't like her, her Bayou outfit, right? I don't like... Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't like I mean I know it's it's you know it's a new outfit but they're they're making this right a sequel and they're make and that and that's another thing that the criticism channels always um talk about too is that they're making this a sequel ride so since it's a sequel ride they can get rid of certain things so they're getting rid of uh Shadow Man like you're not going to have Shadow Man anymore he's dead right because he died in the movie so since this is a sequel, you're not going to have Shadow Man, which is like one of the best things about the movie. I mean, Keith David, are you serious? Like, what? But I digress. Building animatronics for this. The exterior progress that we're seeing here, it's not I saw necessarily those. reflective of the interior progress. There's a lot going on inside. Something that people also forget is that once they get construction wrapped up here, you then have to yeah. program the ride, which can take a month or more. You have to test the ride, which also takes a while. You have to retrain operations. Now, some of these things, it won't be like a brand new attraction since this is a pre-existing attraction where the ride system is the same. Some of this will be able to be fast-tracked, but also lately, yeah. we've seen with these attraction over 
openings with these new offerings uh, that Disney's done several months of previews for different ticket types. They sort of do this tiered opening thing now before an official opening. Here, though, yeah, as which I is told dumb. you guys, for capacity reasons, with the summer being the most consistently busy season in annual theme park attendance at Walt yeah, Disney Yeah, summertime, Disney too. Oh, my to God. To get this thing open as soon as possible. Lordy. So the prospect of it opening early in the summer, like Memorial Day or something like that. No. Personally, I think that is less likely August, than a maybe. more mid to late summer opening. So err on the side of caution and do not expect this ride to be open if you're planning to go to Walt Disney World in May or June. Set your expectations right. If Disney surprises us, awesome. But right now, I'm expecting openings closer to August for both Tiana's Bayou Adventure as well as the Country Bear Musical Jamboree, which, remember, is closed right now. The oh, show is amidst yeah. getting animatronic upgrades and new songs and will be reopening this summer. Speaking of animatronics, the most them. exciting in this brand new batch. Oh, of yeah, I didn't see this either. On Tiana's Bayou Adventure today from Disney. We have a first look at one of the completed Tiana animatronics you will see during the flume ride. It looks really this good. This Tiana animatronic, you'll notice, has a face, which may not seem like that big of a deal, but if you know the animatronics that we've gotten recently at Walt Disney World yeah. over the past you know, they're, decade or they're, so, they're it stands in stark contrast. A lot of the animatronics that we've gotten in modern times at Walt Disney World utilize those flat projection faces, yep, yep. like we saw with Frozen Ever After and in New Fantasyland, and now it seems like the trend Although is going the, back it doesn't look that bad. dimensional faces on the animatronics. The screens. Really, really good. It looks a lot Unless better. Unless they don't We're work. A lot of this with the like on Daisy and the Minnie Minnie. National Minnie. Parks. And now we are seeing that come to Splash Mountain here, or rather Tiana's Bayou Adventure. If you're wondering what that outfit is that yeah. she's wearing here, it's her adventure outfit, Disney says, which they've also made into a costume for the meet and greet character that will be in the area. This animatronic we've gotten new views of today is one we've seen previously in this piece of concept art, which gives you an idea of her placement and her surroundings. It's kind of weird. Like, what is she? Go why is she going on an adventure? Attraction. As far as the other animatronics are concerned, previously we got an early look at Louie, and today Disney said among the dozens of animatronics will be Princess Tiana, Louie, and Mama Odie, as well as Eudora, Charlotte, Prince Ralphie, Prince Naveen, and others. Disney elaborated on the hmm. critters that we'll see throughout the attraction. We've been hearing a lot about lately, these original characters that are going to be all over the attraction. Quote, Tiana's new friends include an otter, a rabbit, a raccoon, a beaver, a turtle, and more. Their spirited stylings will mm. turn the bayou into a party. Along with the opening time frame, so they play music too now. All of a sudden, World, Disney released a short form video oh. of a jazz band playing by the Liberty Bell and the construction walls of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. When was at that? Disney World, very reminiscent of live entertainment, which can be found at Disneyland New Orleans Square. It's right here on the Mickey News ah. YouTube channel that last year we broke the rumor of Disney's larger plans to do away with Frontierland at the Magic Kingdom. Right. At one point, we believed their plans involved re-theming all of Frontierland all of it. and basically tying in part of it into the existing Liberty Square. But you can't Square put Country Bears tying there. the rest of it into a new New Orleans Square style area and then Big Thunder would be I'm not worried about that. What? Titty and Jones? What? What is that? What? Who is that? It's TND and... Oh, T I see what you're saying. <laughs> TND and Jones. <laughs> I got it. I got it. It took it took me a minute. Um, I need I need more. I need I need the um, I need behind front. I need behind Big Thunder Mountain. I need that area. I need I need a villains land. Like, come on, man. We need we need more stuff in here. Become part of a new southwestern theme. Or land. Uh, really, Animal Spanish Kingdom needs it first, but Frontier Land. Yes. Involving additions with Coco and Encanto. Yes. Now Coco and Encanto, their attractions have moved over to the Animal well, Kingdom. Well, in theory, all this blue sky, pie in, in the theory. sky, all these plans Disney's always talking about. None of this is concrete, of course. And late last yeah. year, we brought you guys up to speed on the plans and how they've all changed here, and how now we believe that Frontier Land will be. Still Sticking around, mostly thanks to the lack of agreement between Imagineering, which of course is the park's creative arm, as well as Operations, the ones yeah. actually running the parks with Walt Disney World President Jeff Volley and Parks Chairman Josh Tomorrow. Uh, there's been all this disagreement between these folks over the direction that they want to go here. In 
Yeah. Uh, you guys need to do something. They need to do something. Epic Universe is a year away. A year and a half away. And Magic Kingdom doesn't really need it. It's Animal Kingdom that kind of really needs it. They have that, that whole area. It's that whole area needs to be done. It needs to already be done. I mean, are they really going to lose a lot of money, though? How, how much are they really going to be losing? You know? And can you really calculate that? How can you really calculate that? If, if they're going to lose it, and if they do, how much they can actually lose? Because um, the only way they can kind of fathom, figure that out is, like, by park attendance, right? If, if they lose park attendance that year that it opens... That then obviously that's going to translate to merchandise and all that stuff. So then eventually they'll be able to figure it out. But um, they can only compare it to like last year's or whatever, you know. Who so knows? far as expanding capacity here at the Magic Kingdom, at this hour, I do believe there yeah, is still the a New Orleans area planned alongside Tiana, which will incorporate the retheming of a the Pecos neighboring Bill, Pecos yes. Bill's Cafe restaurant into a Tiana themed restaurant as well as an update to the facade to make it more French and also updating the small Golden Oak Outpost food stand. Which oh, by the way, that's where the... Uh... What are they called? The beignets. That's where the beignets are at. They're croissant beignets, by the way. Don't know why, but a little overcooked. What you have across the street in that corner there. However, I find it very strange that today we got no announcement of a Pecos Bills retheme. And it is entirely possible why not the today? level of disagreement between creative and operations at Walt Disney World has pushed work on that project back. Notice that all of, of these news of course, items that of course, it always does. It always does. They can't figure out. <laughs> they just, they just gotta just do it. That's it. Just do it. What is Pecos Bill even doing for you? Pecos Bill isn't doing nothing for you. I never go into that place. Never. I don't think I've ever gone into Pecos Bill. Honestly. And it's right there on the edge, right next to Splash Mountain or Tiana now. So you have to, you got to put, if you're, if you're saying Tiana's Foods, you're going to make a Tiana's Foods, where are you going to put it besides Pecos Bill? The train is right next to on the other side of Tiana. You have Big Thunder Mountain Railroad right there. And you have Lake. Where else would you put it? And then they, the parade, they come out right next to Tiana. So that's where the parade comes out of. So where else are you going to put it? You're going to move back all that backstage area and put it there and then have and then where and then the parade's going to have to like have a different area. You would have to put it in Pecos. That we get lately even what Disney announced today. It's all just elaborating on giving us more details on projects that were approved 4 years ago. In more recent times, we've been hearing of so much internal strife between creative and operations, creative and the executives. You know, why Disney's park operations people have any say in Imagineering's creative projects right. and their project proposals? It's ridiculous. If you want to know who is... Well, I mean, I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. Stopping us from getting anything of substance from a restaurant update all the way to new rides, new lands, things like this. It's Walt Disney World's president, Jeff Volley, who has the authority to swat down any proposal. And that is because when Chapek was park's chairman back in the day, he did an entire reorg of the decision making structure at the parks, where essentially the idea is, is that each resort is its own company. And the people in charge of that, they get to decide what happens at each of their yeah, parks, I don't like that. at the resort overall. And basically, Imagineering serves as kind of this outside creative consulting firm, where essentially their client is Walt Disney World. So if Walt Disney World leaders don't want to do something, that's where it stops. And yeah. I think that that's a pretty ridiculous decision-making structure. And back when Iger brought back in Imagineering Chief Creative Bruce Vaughn, I thought that that would be a line where, where if Imagineering has cool ideas, if he has cool ideas, he has a line straight to Iger, and then Iger from the top can say, hey, this is what we're doing. Sorry, Park right. Operations, this is what we're doing. Oh, but yeah, you're going against the chain.
chain of command, huh? That don't look Seems good like for you, sir. Can agree on anything. There's too many referees and not enough creative authority, which has resulted yeah. in this situation where Iger says on earning calls, hey, you know, we want to invest money. And of course, there's the whole debate on is he being genuine and all of that. But assuming that he is, you know, at the same time, there is absolutely nothing concrete, nothing that's been fully budgeted out or anything like this reaching his desk for approval. It's all falling apart further down as there's so much strife at the resort level between the creative and the operations, at least yeah, in so far taken as forever the to world is concerned. Except that's the way it's been the past few years. Mind you, Pecos Bills, it was supposed to begin its reimagining right around now, six months prior to the opening of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Mm. So we'll keep our ear to the ground on when and if this little New Orleans corner of the Magic Kingdom. Which I do want to, I want to go to D23 this, this year. I still do believe Stephen, are you going to try and go? That it will, um, because I want to go and I got to see how to get tickets. With all the back I want to go. Just the continued disagreement inside the company. The level of back and forth and internal fighting, this bureaucracy, it is made for a situation where I really don't know anything more than you guys do in terms of if any of these rumors are actually going to come to fruition and become announced projects or not. However, yeah, I want to go. Sources, I do have some idea of what those projects we gotta check are, that out. which are being because that'll be a good over, video or streaming. You know what I mean? Details to you guys of here on the channel in the coming months uh, as more and more things I keep hearing about which sound pretty exciting and also say, ah, they need to fix the stitch though, area they need to do something like, with that kidding me? because it's uh, just so quite a mess it's just sitting Disney. there hopefully we get some more official collecting dust in there instead of ideas in the near future also in the news relating to this possible New Orleans area ahead of Tiana's Bayou Adventure which Disney says they will be pumping full of beignet smells this month Disney is testing the sale of beignets at what do you know the same food stand that'll be part of the rumored new orleans area that right. we've been telling you about the past year that being the golden oak outpost right and they don't have it on the menu right by tiana's menu by sign it's just However, there the reception of these beignets that are being sold this month it hasn't been spectacular so far. no it's not There's some food reviewers pointing out that they are not using the deep frying method they're not the deep fried beignets uh that have right become so popular those look Disneyland. those of course those look amazing, right? And those are those are normal beignets, or as the Italians like to call zeppolis, okay? And it's 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 the same thing. It's just bread, you know, you know, with whatever, um, you know, whatever type of bread you want, and then you fry it, whatever, and you put a bunch of powdered sugar on it. It's it's amazing. I will say the beignets, the croissant beignets, they're decent, right? But I'd rather have these. Uh, because the croissant ones are overcooked. Of course, also at the Scat Cat inside Port Orleans French Quarter. That's what I need. I, oh my World, God, they look place. so much better. Check out, uh, because they do the beignets over there. It looks so awesome. much better. The ones they're serving in the Magic Kingdom Look at this that. Month, look at the difference. Do you see that? Look at the difference. I mean, it's right there in front of your face. Now, I'll tell you what. i tell you what. The, um, the strawberry dipping... Oh my God, it's so good. It is so good. But look at this compared to that. What would you rather have? Yeah, huge difference. And it's not that these are horrible. It's just that they're they're more crunchy and overcooked because they're it's different type of it's croissants, you know. So it's it's a little different. Um, but I mean, look at that. Di I mean, Jesus. Out. Uh, because they do the beignets over there and they are awesome. The ones they're serving in the Magic Kingdom this month, they're more croissanty, I guess yes. you could say, in nature. Some guests have liked these, but are these really Tiana's world famous beignets? No, they're That's not. What Disney's billing them as on the menu. And they're not. It seems a little bit outrageous. It'll be interesting. And this is the and this is the thing that the those criticized channels like to just roast so bad. And I mean, for one, I can't really blame them too much, but I mean, cause look, look why? Just, why'd you have to change them? Just get the same ones that you get from Disneyland. Just bring them over here. That's it. That's all you gotta do. ...to see what the results are from this test selling beignets in the Magic They're Kingdom. They're not great. Heading back over to the attraction right. to see the latest progress in some new photos from Blog Mickey. That's the other to thing, too, is they're doing... They're, back at the they're making... They're making... You see this? You had the real beignets at the cafe. Yeah. Yeah, and those look so... They look so great. That's the other thing, too, is... What is this? Like, I guess they didn't know how to theme 
Sorry. I didn't guess they didn't know how to theme this ride. And so they just did stuff. Splash Mountain exit. You can get quite close to the former Splash Mountain barn again, which has now been repainted. It's also going to be the entrance uh, to the covered portion of the queue for Tiana's what's the, what's the, What is the paint? This area has been criticized for its strange combination of French-inspired pathways and pavers, yeah. which look really, really good, contrasted with a barely tweaked Southern Georgia barn that yeah. Disney slapped some paint on and then also put. Oh yeah, that's that's the other thing, the color mural. Yeah, neither the architecture nor the mural that has been painted on that entrance barn really have anything to do with the 1920s New Orleans theme, which yeah. is supposed to be the setting. It does have. Princess I don't Rob, get it. As well as this attraction, but as can be seen from the Frontierland train station, looking towards the covered portion of the queue disney is making lots of changes to those inside areas right now but that slightly retooled barn is definitely a good example of the budget that they are working with with this attraction that's Much of the interior of splash mountain that's throughout the other the thing ride is remaining as is uh, many parts of it you know like things like trees like the hills a lot of the parts that you had in the splash mountain sets you are going to notice those are still around in the interior uh now there's just going to be you know more plants on them. no deep fryer so in that stand yeah maps there's going to be faith how you doing faith how you doing no deep <laughs> projection on top of them and then of course you're also going to have but this like, new animatronics the first complete animatronic looks awesome look though i will say that so that's something to keep in mind with this attraction i don't like the I really outfit this whole area where you enter the ride disney would adopt it is what a it more is. authentic architecture style along the lines of what californians get to enjoy with walt disney's new orleans square but that's modern disney for yeah. you on the other hand what budget imagineering did get here does seem to be going towards some very fluid very very lifelike very if they do have a low budget on this if they do have a low budget i'm happy that at least they have this good animatronic itself now the outfit we can debate about but yeah the yellow looks horrible the yellow looks completely horrible but i at least if they're if they have a low budget at least they put good animatronics into it um but that's about it i mean the right is exactly the the, yes, the mural is awful. Yes, I, I don't know what that has to do with anything. I heard their reasoning, but it was just weird. Um, but again, it's probably a budget reason, um, which is the other issue. Either they take too long to make the rides or they don't have enough budget for the ride and then it makes the ride look half you know pretty cool looking animatronics with faces which is great to see let me know your thoughts on the latest here at tiana's bayou adventure she looks good though will be you know but the outfit i don't like oh, what's up with that walt disney World, the tie sometime you know sometime later in 2024 over at disneyland resort be sure to subscribe with those notifications on so you don't miss out on further details relating to the Boom. updates to frontierland which disney has in the works yeah, right i mean now, it's as well it as is basically going to be space spout, splash mountain so but with just tiana so I I mean I didn't I never loved Splash Mountain but now that it's Tiana I will like it a little more but if you know they're doing weird things to it you know what are you going to do about it you know what I mean It is what it is right it is what it is so we'll just we'll just see how it how it ends up unfortunately and it's coming out later this year it's going to be very hot there's going to be a virtual queue for it more than likely which is going to be another thing even in and of itself. So that the outfit is bad. And again, like I, like I said earlier, this is a sequel ride. So you're not going to have Shadow Man. No Shadow Man. He's gout. Keith David, gone. Right? We don't need Keith David, apparently. You know, he was only, he was only the Arbiter in Halo 2. And, you know, what's his name from uh, Stitch? He's like... So many different, like, he's, his voice is, like, distinct. And Shadow Man was awesome. But, you know what I mean? So, you know, we'll see. 